In today's digital age, online privacy is a crucial aspect of our lives. With the increasing amount of personal data being collected and stored online, it's essential to understand the importance of protecting our individual rights to privacy. Online privacy and anonymity have become intertwined concepts. However, they're not exactly the same thing. In my view, online privacy refers to the ability to control who has access to our personal information, while online anonymity refers to the ability to conceal or hide our identity online. Online anonymity can often increase online privacy in several ways. For example, by using something like Tor or I2P, individuals can mask their IP addresses, locations, and browsing habits. Online anonymity can also reduce the amount of surveillance being conducted on individuals as it becomes harder for governments and corporations to monitor their online interests and activities. If you're looking for a solution to protect your online identity, Hunix is an excellent option. Hunix is a custom-built Linux distribution that prioritizes user anonymity and digital security. One of the key features that makes Hunix an attractive option for me is its kernel-based virtual machine images. KVM images enable the creation of isolated virtual machines, providing an additional layer of protection. In this video, I try to summarize my steps to set up and run Hunix system using KVM and Vert Manager. This cover everything from creating the KVM images and virtual networks for both the gateway and workstation to successfully booting up your secure Hunix environment. However, before starting, you need to install KVM and Vert Manager first. I have uploaded a video documentation of my installation process for Vert Manager on Arch Linux. Please watch the video if needed. Without further ado, let's get started. First, make sure that the libvirt daemon is running. As you can see, libvirt is currently active and running on my machine. In order to be able to manage virtual machines as your regular user, the user must be added to the libvirt groups. I already added my regular user to the group, so I'm all set. The next step is to download the Hunix KVM images. In this video, I will be using the GUI version, which uses XFCE as its desktop environment. And since my internet connection is slow, let me skip the download process until it's complete. Okay, the download process has been completed. To proceed, extract the downloaded archive using the tar utility. Note that the extraction process may take some time to complete. For optimal results, it's recommended to allow the terminal to run uninterrupted after executing the command. The extracted archive contains important documents, including the license agreement and disclaimer, as well as XML templates and Hunix image files for both Gateway and Workstation. As a true champion of digital enlightenment, I take great pleasure in scrolling the license agreement and accept the terms without understanding what it means. All right, let's get back to the topic. You can modify the XML files and adjust the virtual machine settings before importing it. But unless you're familiar with Libvirt's XML structure, editing the default configuration is not recommended. Instead, make modifications through Vert Manager later if needed. So, in this case, I will use the default settings. To add virtual networks for the Hunix virtual machines, import both Hunix external and internal network from the XML file configuration. Now open Vert Manager application and right-click on your KVM connection. Then select Details from the menu. Go to Virtual Networks tab and ensure that the Auto Start on Boot checkbox is checked for both Hunix internal and Hunix external virtual networks. Go back to the terminal and move the Hunix VM image files to your default libvirt storage directory. I need to add some notes here. Hunix disk images are sparse files, which means that you need special commands if you're copying the images instead of moving them. Additionally, make sure that you remove the desktop environment, version, and CPU architecture part from your destination file. Finally, import Hunix gateway and workstation from the XML configuration file. You should see these two virtual machines that we just imported were listed in the Vert Manager application. Next, let's take a closer look at the Hunix gateway detailed configuration. If your host operating system has limited amount of memory, you can run Hunix Gateway in CLI mode by simply changing the memory allocation to 512 megabytes or less. However, please be aware that resource-intensive operations, such as upgrading the operating system with a minimum amount of memory, can cause virtual machines to freeze. For now, I'll stick to the default settings. Another thing that I want to highlight here is network interfaces. The Hunix Gateway configuration uses two virtual network interfaces. Hunix Internal is an isolated virtual network shared between the Hunix Gateway and the Hunix Workstation. This network is entirely separate from the external network and does not directly connect to the internet. The external network used by the Hunix gateway to establishes a connection with the Tor network via the host machine's network interface. In summary, the Hunix gateway acts as the sole router for the Hunix workstation, ensuring that all traffic is anonymized through Tor network. Since Hunix workstation needs Hunix gateway for online functionality, we need to start the Hunix gateway first. Otherwise, Hunix workstation can only be used offline. And while waiting for the booting process of the Hunix gateway to complete, let's take a look at the Hunix workstation configuration and make some modifications. I think one virtual CPU for the graphical interface is not enough for me nowadays, so I added another CPU core. For memory allocation, I'm fine with that, and I left the rest of the configuration as default. Upon the initial boot, the Hunix setup wizard will automatically run. That's why the initial boot process takes quite a long time. 
click the OK button to run the system check utility. Let's go back here and start the Hunix workstation. All user applications, such as Tor Browser, should be launched from this VM to ensure they utilize the Tor network as only Tor connections are permitted. Hunix Workstation provides a bunch of utilities to maintain the VM, such as upgrading the operating system without requiring root privileges. Let me upgrade this new virtual machine, which will also verify that our network connectivity is functioning properly. Okay, I think this video covers most of the Hunix installation process. To wrap up this Hunix installation video, I've included links to the Hunix KVM documentation in my blog post and description, making it easier for you to follow along. Feel free to explore those resources. In addition to this video, I'd like to share my thoughts on online anonymity. From my perspective, I'm skeptical about online anonymity. I believe that with sufficient time, power, and resources, it's possible to trace everything back to its origin. While this might sound pessimistic, it's a harsh reality we must confront. With advancements in technology and data collection, it's becoming increasingly easy for governments, corporations, and hackers to track down individuals online. While online anonymity can increase online privacy, it's not a foolproof solution. But it's always a good idea to use a combination of tools and strategies to maintain online privacy and security. Thanks for watching.